Now, sometimes it's important to distinguish between a description of the motion as seen by a fixed observer versus a description of the motion as seen by a material or moving observer or from the point of view of the moving particle. So the former is called a material or Lagrangian description of the motion. For example, if we were to write the displacement u as a function of capital X, which was the original position of the point, and t, then this would be a Lagrangian description of the motion. And so expanding that, we would get little x of big X and t minus big X. We call this a material or Lagrangian position where big X represents the original point of a particle because all particles in the system only have one original point. And so by writing things as a function of its original position, you're following the particle. An alternative equally valid way of writing the displacement would be to use a spatial or Eulerian description of the motion where u of little x and t is equal to little x minus big X of x and t. This is a spatial description of the motion because now things are written as a function of the point in space and different particles are occupying that point at different times. Similarly, we could write a Lagrangian or Eulerian definition of velocity. For example, we could write velocity from the point of view of the moving particle, which would be v of big X and t, or d little x of big X and t dt, or velocity from the point of view of a fixed external observer, v of little x and t is d little x of x and t dt. So again, when we write a description of a motion as a function of original coordinates that label material particles, we call this a Lagrangian or material description. When we write a description of a motion as a function of spatial coordinates uh, through which different particles are passing at different times, this is the spatial or Eulerian view of a fixed observer. Time rates of change of physical quantities, including change of velocity, which is acceleration, when seen by the moving particle, can be different from the same quantity measured by a fixed spatial observer, because there could be relative accelerations between the particle and the observer. When we write the physical laws of mechanics, they need to be with respect to the physical particle, they apply to the particle, not the point in space that it occupies. And so to obtain these correct rates of change, we use a quantity called the material derivative, which computes time rates of change as seen by the moving particle in terms of the partial derivatives with respect to time as seen by a fixed spatial or Eulerian observer. So for example, the material velocity would be b as a function of big X and t, uh, and its spatial equivalent would be v hat of little x and t. So the material, so the material description of the acceleration vector a of big X and t is the material derivative of the velocity vector big D v big D t, which is the partial derivative of v of big X and t with respect to t which we can then evaluate in terms of v hat using the chain rule, which gives us del v hat of little x and t del x1 times del x1 of big x and t del t plus del v hat of little x and t del x2 times del x2 of big x and t del t plus del v hat of little x and t del x3 times del x3 of big X and t del t plus del v hat of little x and t del t. So the Lagrangian or material expression for the acceleration as seen by the moving particle a of big X and t or v dot of big X and t written in terms of the spatial view would be v hat dot grad v plus del v hat del t. So you can see that 
The difference between the acceleration as seen by the moving particle and the acceleration as seen by the fixed observer is this relative acceleration, v hat dot grad v, which depends not on time rates of change of velocity, but on spatial differences in velocity. So different particles moving at different speeds will give a fixed observer a different measure of acceleration than a moving uh, particle. And it's the acceleration as seen by the moving particle that's the one that determines its inertial force and physical quantities. The material derivative is something that we'll come back to when we um, move to continuum mechanics. Now let's consider a curvilinear motion and resolve the tangential and normal components of the acceleration. This requires a little bit of differential geometry and the key trick here is to and imagine to create a parameter s that you can think of of the arc length that varies continuously along the trajectory of the moving particle. We can define ds, the length of any segment along the trajectory, using Pythagoras. So ds squared equals dx1 squared plus dx2 squared plus dx3 squared, or in vector notation, dx dot dx. Therefore, ds is equal to the square root of dx dot dx. So all we really need to know is that this relationship can be found and exists. The velocity, which is dx dt, or x dot, could therefore by the chain rule be written as dx ds ds dt. Now, dx ds is the vector normalized by its length, so it's a unit vector along the tangent of the uh, motion, so that's e sub t, and ds dt is just the magnitude of the velocity component along the uh, tangent direction, so it's the magnitude of the velocity vector. Therefore, the acceleration dv dt is d dt of ds dt times the unit vector tangent vector et, which equals, therefore, by the chain rule, d2s dt squared times e sub t plus ds dt times det dt. This further expands to d2s dt squared times et, the tangent vector, plus ds dt times d e t d s times d s d t, which therefore gives us d two s d t squared times e t plus d e t d s times d s d t squared. Now we won't prove it, but d e t d s, the derivative of the tangent vector with respect to the arc length is actually the normal vector divided by the radius of curvature. So this gives us d2s dt squared times et plus en over rho times ds dt all squared. Therefore, the tangent component of the acceleration is d2s dt squared or dv dt, where v here is the magnitude of the velocity vector, and the normal component of the acceleration is 1 over rho times ds dt squared, or the magnitude of the velocity squared divided by rho. So that gives us that the acceleration vector has tangent component, d magnitude of v dt, and normal component, magnitude of v squared over rho.